in this last section of lecture about fusion of LiDAR and UAS data, we will show an important application of this fusion, and that's for modeling overland flow or stormwater runoff. This is a pretty standard modeling task when working with geospatial data and digital terrain models. However, the microtopography captured at ultra high resolution by unmanned aerial systems and derived by structure from motion poses special challenges for flow routing. And as you have noticed uh, in our digital surface model, uh, we have lots and lots of small real depressions. And these are important features, for example, from to capture the impact of tillage on surface runoff. And the pattern of ponding, of uh, uh, capturing water in small depressions is much more complex than what we have with smooth, lower resolution data. And also a lot of these barriers are overflown and all of these uh, phenomena are not really supported by standard flow routing tools. And at the same time, the surfaces derived uh, by LiDAR and by UAS are quite noisy because they, uh, they capture a lot of detail, but also there are very subtle errors uh, that require uh, much more robust algorithms for flow routing than uh, the usual smooth digital elevation model. So what can we do? One method that works with these, uh, uh, with these uh, noisy surfaces with a lot of de depressions is path sampling method. And it is a stochastic method for solving flow continuity equations. So it is actually solving partial differential equations describing overland water flow. And what it is doing, it, it has a stochastic component that, that makes it very robust on these noisy surfaces. And it couples or takes advantage of the duality of discrete particle representation and continuous uh, uh, surface representation of water depth. So essentially, the water depth is computed as density of particles passing through each grid cell. And you can read more about this method in the, uh, in the linked uh, article. And we will also cover it in the advanced computing and simulations class uh, that I will be teaching uh, 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 a year from now in spring 2019. But for now, uh, you can read uh, uh, this paper and you can also read the manual page uh, for RSIM water uh, uh, because this method is uh, implemented in, in GRASS and we will run it in our assignment and that should help you to understand how this method works. So how does this method look? The, the example that you see here is really to show the coupling of uh, particle sampling and, uh, uh, and continuous water depth representation. And this was run on three meter resolution uh, digital elevation model derived by LiDAR. So how does it work on our surface uh, uh, derived from uh, unmanned aerial system? So you can see, again, we get the water flowing, uh, but there are some issues. Although the, the uh, depressions are very well captured, we also get a, an artificial ponding in the area where the uh, uh, cover, the, the crop, essentially creates an artificial barrier. And this would be realistic if this area was, uh, uh, was for example, very dense, uh, tall grass. But if it is a row crop like corn, then the water will get through and uh, we need to use uh, bare ground surface instead of the surface that includes uh, uh, also the, that creates the barrier to flow through the uh, 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 as a digital surface model. But in some areas, you can see the water gets through anyway. So how do we deal with it? We, what we really need to do, we need to remove the vegetation. 
And another issue is that we obviously have areas here where water is flowing into, for example here, into this location from outside. So you need to take a larger digital elevation model, derive your watershed boundaries, and make sure that you are running your model within the, uh, including the, uh, the entire watershed. So one way how we can uh, replace the, the, uh, the area with vegetation or with the row crops in our case is that we can just patch in, we can detect these uh, 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 crop areas by using a threshold, like a threshold above the bare ground and you will do it in your assignment and just patch in the, uh, patch in let's say LiDAR based bare ground or a bare ground from another UAS flight. So in this case, we are actually using another UAS flight where uh, when uh, this area wasn't planted and when this area was, uh, uh, was bare ground. So, so you can see that if you just patch it, then you get uh, here the artificial, uh, artificial flow, almost like artificial ditch, uh, and also it, uh, it creates this artificial barrier. So that's why we already talked about the smooth fusion. If we uh, patch them together using smooth fusion, then we get a much better representation of flow. So now, uh, now this, uh, uh, this concentrated flow due to that edge just disappears. And also here water flows freely through this uh, bare, ground, uh, bare ground area. So here is an example from the, uh, from the assignment when in the first step we just patch, uh, patch our UAS data into the LiDAR based model so that we capture for example the flow from here and you can see that if you just patch it uh, as, uh, as we have uh, already discussed uh, we have this edge here and water then flows along this edge creating an artificial flow and of course everywhere downstream you will, uh, you will have a misleading representation of the amount of flow that is, uh, uh, that is there or amount of water that would be there. So again we can use smooth patching and that edge essentially disappears, is smoothed out and we have uh, uh, flow here along this evolving reel represented in a much more accurate way. And then we discussed this artificial ponding along the boundary with the, uh, with the uh, crop and we can replace that crop area with a digital elevation model that has, uh, that has bare ground. And then we get much more realistic uh, uh, surface water flow after the, uh, the fusion with variable uh, boundaries. So you can see that here, essentially this area is now resolved because it, uh, it, uh, we have replaced the uh, vegetated cover with bare ground. So what did we learn in, this, in these three sections uh, of our lecture? So we talked uh, about evaluation and interpretation of differences between LiDAR and UAS structure from motion DEMs. Uh, we have uh, discussed and described the techniques for smooth fusion of high resolution DEMs and you will be doing them in your, practicing them in your uh, assignment and you, you are very welcome to improve them. And then we have shown one application of this smooth fusion and that is overland flow modeling where, the, where we need to patch the new data into the existing bare ground data and then we also use the smooth fusion for uh, replacing the vegetated area 
uh, with digital surface, with digital elevation model, with background uh, uh, representation. Now, in your assignment, you will also have an optional section that includes uh, Python uh, scripting in Grass GIS. So I will, there are a couple of slides that describe this, so I encourage you to look at them. And I also encourage you uh, to, to run the Python part, especially if you have some background in Python, it should be relatively easy for you.